cancer is killer number two. The Princeton Research Foundation um, uh, did a really elegant series of experiments, but let me just uh, throw some quick stats. This is the largest study ever to look at um, uh, diet and cancer, looking at uh, about a half a million people. Uh, found the incidence of all cancers combined uh, lower among those eating vegetarian um, compared to those eating meat. Um, and the worst, uh, the most striking um, uh, uh, finding was how low the risk was for some of these fastest growing cancers like lymphomas, leukemias, these liquid cancers. And the worst meat out of all the ones, they, out of all the, the animal products they looked at um, was actually poultry consumption. Um, they got about uh, two to three times the odds. So this is non Hodgkin's lymphoma, follicular leukemia, these others, lymphomas, leukemias. Two to three times the risk for just every 50 grams of poultry consumption. That's like a quarter of a chicken breast every day. They triple our risk of these cancers. In fact, the, the relationship between meat and cancer is such that in the journal Meat Science, they asked, should we become vegetarians or can we make meat safer? This is what they're... They're coming up with all these additives to add to the meat to, uh, for example, suppress the toxic effects of the heme iron, the blood-based iron in meat. Now, they're still kind of under, uh, under study, but could provide what they call an acceptable way to prevent cancer because reducing meat consumption completely out of the question, obviously. Um, uh, their concern is that should the National Cancer Institute recommendations to reduce meat consumption be adhered to, yeah, sure, cancer incidence may be reduced, but... Farmers in the meat industry would suffer important economical problems. For those of us more worried um, about the suffering caused by this industry rather than the suffering of the industry, what happens if you put cancer on a plant-based diet? And this is where the Pritikin Research Foundation came in. Did these really elegant series of experiments, simple experiments. You take people, put them on different diets, you draw their blood, you drip their blood on human cancer cells growing in a petri dish, and you see just whose blood is better at suppressing cancer growth. So they were part of the team that worked with Dr. Dean Ornish um, uh, to uh, take men with prostate cancer, um, put them on a plant-based diet for a year, um, and this is what they found. They found that the blood of even those eating the standard American diet suppressed cancer growth. I mean, if it didn't, most of us would be dead right now. It's just that uh, though men who ate a plant-based diet for a year, their blood suppressed cancer growth about seven times better. The blood circulating through the bodies of these men uh, gained the power to significantly slow down cancer cell growth. Now, but this was for men on, uh, and uh, prostate cancer. For women, number one cancer killer among young women is breast cancer. They wanted to repeat the study using women and breast cancer cells, but look, they didn't want to wait a whole year to get the results. Um, so they said, let's see what a plant-based diet can do within two weeks against three um, uh, uh, um, uh, lines of uh, human breast cancer. Uh, so this is the before picture, cancer cell growth powering weight 100%, and then this is after just two weeks of eating healthy. This is a representative slide. Um, kind of under the microscope, basically they lay down a carpet of human breast cancer. They drip on the blood of women eating the standard American diet. And then they do the same. Then they put them on a, a healthy diet for two weeks, and then they do it again. And so they act as their own controls before and after. Um, so this is uh, women eating the standard American diet. You can see even if you're eating a pretty poor diet, you can kind of break up some of the cancer. But two weeks eating healthy and their blood can do this, right? Their body's just cleaned up. It's like they're a whole new person inside. Um, uh, now, slowing cancer uh, growth is nice, but getting rid of it is even better. This is what's called tunnel imaging, uh, which measures DNA fragmentation or cell death, where dying cells light up as little white spots. As you can see, again, even if you're eating a crappy diet, you can kill off a few cancer cells, but you take these same women just two weeks later eating healthy and their bodies can do this. Which raises the question, what kind of, what kind of, you know, blood do we want, right? Do we want blood that just kind of, you know, rolls over when new cancer cells pop up? Or do we want a bloodstream circulating to every nook and cranny in our body with the power to slow down and stop it. 
Um, now this was, and so this is what's, uh, again, measuring uh, program cell death before and after. Now, but this was before and after um, a plant-based diet and exercise. They had these women going out walking 30 minutes a day. You say, well, wait a second. If you do two things, diet and exercise, how do you know diet had anything to do with it? So they decided to find out. So they, um, this is what we saw before the diet and exercise group. Um, this is uh, measuring program cell death, cancer cell clearance. And as you can see, now this was this group, a um, uh, healthy diet, plant-based diet and daily exercise, just like walking, moderate exercise, for 14 years on average. All right, and you can see the cancer cell clearance they got. Compare that to your average uh, standard American uh, um, diet person. Um, their cancer cell clearance is essentially non-existent. All right. Okay, but we've already seen that. This is the interesting group in the middle. So this group, 14 years of the standard American diet, but 14 years of daily, strenuous, hour-long exercise like calisthenics, literally an hour a day in the gym, seven days a week for 14 years. So that's thousands of hours in the gym. How did they do? You see a little burger in their hand. All right. <laughs> they wanted to know if you exercise long enough, if you exercise hard enough, can you rival some strolling plant eaters? <laughs> Let's see what happened. Exercise worked, no question. But nothing appears to kind of kick more cancer butt than a plant-based diet. Here's that uh, same tunnel imaging we saw before. Even if you're a couch potato eating fried potatoes, you're not totally defenseless. You can kill off a few cancer cells. You exercise for thousands of hours, and you can kill off cancer cells left and right, but nothing appears more powerful than eating a plant-based diet. The question is why? And actually, normally I kind of skip this section, and, but I know this, I know this I thought this crowd could take a little extra science. Um, um, and that is, and the question, because it's just. It's shocking. How can, within two weeks, it's like you're an entirely different person. How could you so dramatically improve your cancer defenses in such a short time? Well, we actually found out recently. Um, they finally figured out the, the underlying mechanism for these anti-cancer effects. And these um, experiments actually go back over a decade. And the reason, even though they're really phenomenal work, the reason I didn't cover it, the reason there weren't videos on the website is because there wasn't a mechanism. I was not satisfied. I wanted to know why. Um, and they finally figured it out. Um, and it involves, it's a fascinating detective story, and I have lots of videos that talk about the, how they figured it out, but I'll just kind of skip to the chase. But it has to do with little people and big people, and it has to do with big dogs and little dogs. And uh, marshmallows, tinker toys, and cannibalism, vegan bodybuilders, on it. It's a great, I encourage people to check it out, but uh, jump to the chase, IGF-1. You just heard the last speaker talk about insulin-like growth factor 1, which is this cancer-promoting growth hormone involved, as you heard, in every stage of cancer cell initiation, promotion, spread, um, and growth. And you go on a uh, healthy plant-based diet and exercise, and you drop, within two weeks, your IGF-1 levels. Um, and you do it for years. This is that 14-year group. Um, you drop your levels even better. So the benefits continue to accrue the longer you do it. And your levels of IGF-1 binding protein go up. IGF-1 binding protein is like your body's emergency break. It, uh, it, it's your body's way to prevent uncontrolled growth in the body um, uh, by uh, your, uh, so um, within just two weeks, you can lower your IGF-1 levels. Um, but what about all the IGF-1 you had, IGF-1 production you can lower within two weeks? What about all the IGF-1 you have circulating from the bacon and eggs you had you know, three weeks ago? Well, your, your liver releases this snatch squad of binding proteins to pull excess IGF-1 out of your system. Um, and uh, by uh, within just two weeks, your binding um, uh, capacity goes up, and you keep up with a healthy diet for years, your binding capacity goes up even further. Um, and this is the experiment that really nailed IGF-1 as the villain. This is what we saw before. You go on a healthy diet, cancer cell growth drops like a rock, cancer cell death shoots up, which is what we want. 
Here's the critical group here. What they did is they added back to the cancer cells just the amount of IGF-1 banished from their system, added back to the cancer um, um, uh, just the amount that was banished by eating healthy, and what happens? Um, You eliminate the diet and exercise effect. It's as if you never started eating healthy at all. And so this is how we know that um, by... uh, by, uh, um, eating, in this case, it's actually the animal protein. Eating animal protein, uh, we boost our liver's uh, production of IGF-1, and that boosts cancer growth. But we can drop that, again, within just weeks. But raises the question, how low does one have to go? And I talk about um, uh, uh, a number of follow-up studies that have looked at vegetarians versus vegans versus meat eaters, and it turns out it is the animal protein that's boosting IGF-1, so it doesn't matter, as you heard last, whether it's dairy protein, egg protein, meat protein, um, that uh, vegetarians did not have significantly lower IGF-1 levels than meat eaters. Only the vegans, only those kind of uh, moving towards uh, wholly plant-based diets were able to significantly lower their IGF-1 levels.